Amen. Thank you so much for being here this morning, and if you're looking online, we welcome you also as we continue our series entitled, Something to Consider. Now, some of you may be thinking, Father's Day is not tomorrow. Guess what? We will be one week from now out at camp meeting, won't we? Say yes. We'll be closed for services here. And it just, for me, I just think it's a golden opportunity to speak to this whole issue of fatherhood. Now, I recognize, I totally understand that when we talk about fatherhood, for some, it's not a pleasant topic. And my heart goes out to you. If you have received some kind of ill treatment uh, from your father, uh, God bless you, and I pray for your healing, but we still need to talk about fathers. Would you agree? Okay, so why spend time celebrating our dads and addressing fatherhood? If you haven't noticed, current popular culture sees dads as inept and unnecessary. Would you agree with that? And one of the latest demonstrations of such a dismissive posture toward fathers is seen in what is called dad shaming. Ever heard of that? Dad shaming. It's when dads are criticized for their parenting choices. In a 2019 poll by C.S. Mott Children's Hospital at the University of Michigan, they found half of the fathers polled admitted, get this, half of them admitted to being criticized about their parenting style or choices. I mean, it happens out on the playground, it happens all over. But the most damaging source of criticism the child's other parent, the mother. When dad is shamed by mom for his way of parenting, a dad tends to feel a greater loss of confidence than he would if the criticism came from a grandparent, a friend, stranger, or professional who works with the child. And as a result, dads are left feeling devalued, demoralized, and less confident. That's the reality check for us this morning, dad shaming. And in one article that I read, the author cautioned moms, cautioned moms with this observation, and I quote, so while you may cringe at the way your partner makes ponytails or helps with homework, before you put down his efforts, consider the fact that doing so could make him want to be less involved with the kids end quote. Why is there a general disdain for how dads do fatherhood? Could it be that the enemy wants to demoralize our dads in such a way that we are less involved in our children's lives as dads? Multiple studies continue to show that uninvolved dads result in major negative impacts in the lives of their children. One organization known as The Father Project, a nonprofit fatherhood program in the Department of Psychiatry at Massachusetts General Hospital in conjunction with Harvard Medical University School Teaching Hospital, in case you wanted to look that up, says this, a lack of involvement of fathers is associated with, okay, this is scientific research, a lack of involvement of fathers is associated with negative emotional, social, academic, and behavioral outcomes for children. These outcomes result in high costs to society, including higher rates of crime, poverty, marital conflict, and substance abuse. Findings from the rapidly growing science of early childhood and early brain development clearly show the positive lifelong impact fathers can have by being engaged early in their children's lives. The feeling of closeness to a father, get this, is critically linked to a child's future success in school, employment, and relationships, end quote. Yet, more children than ever are growing up without father involvement in their lives, many times due to dad shaming, criticism. So why would the enemy 
through well-meaning people, I'm sure, try to demoralize our dads through criticism in our society and even in our families as Christians. Why would he do that? Could it be that Satan hopes to devalue and denigrate dads in our minds so that we will project the same negative posture onto our heavenly Father? I think so. I think so. And when we have a negative view of our heavenly Father, the enemy knows that we'll most likely reject him. On the positive side, Many studies show that positive father involvement leads to better emotional, academic, social, and behavioral outcomes for children. Now, I'm talking about dads, I'm talking about stepdads, I'm talking about people, uh, men who are like dads to others, okay? This is a time, it's a reality check, but a time of encouragement. There's a challenge in this nation, and it needs to be stopped. It needs to be dealt with. Would you agree? Look at any TV flick or movie or whatever, and you'll see fathers postured as bumbling idiots. And that's just wrong. And I'm not in conspiracy theories, but I believe that the Bible shows us who's behind that. And I don't want any part of that. Do you? We need to say something about it. So what are some timeless principles of fatherhood which we can encourage our dads to embrace, which will positively shape our kids for heaven and help change society? What are some positive uh, principles, timeless principles? I'm going to mention three. In your bulletin, there's a sheet of paper if you want to just jot these down, think it through. It's something to consider. Write down some text and think about if it makes sense to you. The first timeless principle is that of courage. Courage. 2 Timothy 1.7. Please look it up in your Bible uh, if you'd like. 2 Timothy 1.7. And I love how Paul puts this. For God has not, God has not, He has not given us a spirit of fear. Okay? It's not a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That spells courage in union with Jesus. We can have courage, all right? So courage, number one. I know it's scary, dads. I are one. (laughs) It's scary. It's daunting sometimes. And we don't want to mess up, and we do mess up. But God is calling us to have courage, to embrace courage in all that we do. Courage, so important. Courage to do a few things, at least that I'm going to mention. Courage to do a lot of things, I'm sure. But courage to make tough decisions and fulfill our responsibilities as Father. That takes courage to make tough decisions, when those decisions are counterculture, tough decisions, when we know that there will be people close to us that will give us you-know-what if we do what we need to do. But with love and kindness and firmness, we embrace the courage from Jesus to make tough decisions and fulfill those responsibilities. You'll read in the book of Judges in the Old Testament talking about the judge Deborah, And just read through that story this afternoon and find out why she had to take the lead. It's because the men around her were too afraid. She stepped up to the plate, and she really showed through her life what we need as dads, and that is to have courage, courage. We need courage to protect our families and our kids, physically protect them in our day and age, physically even, but especially morally moral protection. Would you allow a pedophile, a pedophile that's just been released from prison to come into your home and share from their hearts and their minds? That's an extreme example, but I'm talking about the influences that we allow into our homes through the boob tube, through the screens. Really? Would you really allow that person into your home physically? (laughs) No, the influences. Dads, we need to be the gatekeepers. 
We need to keep an eye on what's influencing our kids and take a stand and have the courage to say no to those evil influences, okay? So to protect physically and morally, and also to lovingly train. I know, the word discipline. Lovingly train, all right? with clear boundaries and expectations, lovingly, not out of anger. If you're just getting angry, just take a time out. Take a time out. It's okay before you send them on a time out, all right? Just take a time out and lovingly, lovingly make those boundaries clear and those expectations clear. Now, I don't know, dads. For me, it's, it's just so easy to abdicate my role in this area. Really easy. Well, uh, your mom will, yeah, you know, the kid's done something and they need that uh, consequence that's either imposed or just the natural consequences to have a learning time. Uh, and we just kind of, you know, uh, we're afraid of something and we just, you know, mom can take care of the discipline, the training. No, no. It's a team effort, mom and dad. Let's not abdicate our roles, dads. It's tough, it takes courage but the kids will win out in the long run, all right? So courage to make tough decisions and fulfill responsibilities, to protect physically and morally, and to lovingly train with clear boundaries and exceptions, expectations. Sorry. Uh, number two, the second timeless principle that God wants to share with us is from Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. Look it up later. The fruit of the Spirit is, say it with me if you know them, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control, faithfulness. Number two is faithfulness. Dads, we need to step up to the plate and, and be even more faithful than we've been in the past. Our kids need to see that, faithful, uh, maintaining a walk with God in your home, individually and leading out in your home doesn't mean that you have to come up with all the stuff that's shared in a family worship time, but you're leading out, and your wife will love you for that. Your kids will just feel so secure in that. If you are seeking God as a family, visually, visibly, and you actually take that time, boy, that is going to give security to your kids in this crazy society like nothing else. Faithful to maintaining your own personal, our own personal relationship and walk with Jesus and as a family, okay? Another one is uh, faithfulness in loving and speaking well of your wife. Men, lovingly speaking well of your wife. It makes a big difference. When kids can see us as dads loving our wives, treating them with respect and dignity, that makes a huge difference. And when you're tempted to pray, play Archie Bunker with all in the family and just send those put-downs. Anybody, anybody hear of Archie Bunker and all in the family? From, yeah, I know I'm dating myself. It's way back. But it's even on TV now as a rerun. It's like horrible. I grew up with that, laughing. And it's like, oh, my goodness, the view of women and denigration of women that that… Oh, don't get me started. Just an example, okay? But it means so much when we as dads uh, faithfully love and speak well of our wives. And also being emotionally present, not just physically present, but emotionally present. I will never leave you nor forsake you, God says. And we need to be that way too. Never leave, never forsake, all right? And so be emotionally present. Turn off the blooming phone if you can't not answer it. Just turn it off. When you have kids around and you're spending time with them, just, just, I mean, how did we get along when there was a phone on the wall? <laughs> Come on, right? It's such a time sucker. It sucks our attention away from our kids, from what's going on. Even if you're not talking, you're there, emotionally present, you're showing your love for and interest in your kids, and it makes all the difference in the world. Those of us that have maybe uh, grown up with a, an emotionally absent dad, we know the results of that, the damage that it can do. So please, I beg you, fathers, set that phone aside when you get home or however it's worked out in your, in your family, set it aside, okay? Say yes. 
Okay. I heard you. <laughs> Being emotionally present, uh, there are even gender-specific benefits. Listen up, folks. There are gender-specific benefits to being engaged as a dad for your kids, all right? I'm reading this from, uh, I didn't write down, allforkids.org. Uh, said this, just listen real carefully. Quotes, it is natural to assume that this role as a father has more of an impact on the development of boys versus girls, but that isn't the case. The involvement of a father figure has unique but nevertheless proven impacts on both sexes. Continuing, for example, for young boys, father engagement reduces the frequency of behavioral problems while also decreasing delinquency and economic disadvantage in low-income families. For girls and young women, father engagement reduces psychological problems and likelihood of depression. Study after study. You can go online and find all of this information. These are just little examples to show us the truth of these words. Being emotionally present, faithfully being emotionally present getting to the point where our kids cry out to us as dads, Abba, Father, Daddy, Daddy. That's what it means, Abba, Father. And Jesus, when He was in the Garden of Gethsemane, according to the Gospel of Mark, that's how He addressed His heavenly Father, Abba, Father. There is that close connection and engagement with the heavenly Father, and there's no way that's going to happen if we are emotionally disengaged from our kids. Should I tell you how I really feel about the issue? Okay. Number three, third timeless principle, is forgiving encouragement. Forgiving encouragement. We as dads, it's easy for us maybe to be critical and point out what's going wrong and what's… It's, let's look for the good. Let's look for the good. Luke 15, please turn there. Luke 15, familiar story that Jesus shared. I believe it was of an actual event. <clears throat> Luke 15, talking about the prodigal son, if you've heard of that. Verse 20. Verse 20. And remember, the son went away, just rejected all of dad and all he stood for and went and did his own thing. And then when he came to his senses, when he came to himself, he remembered his father. He knew that there might be a chance. Well, he didn't really know his father well enough, but it was something to go on, and so he started heading home. And verse 20 says, And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran. In that society, totally uh, that's just a no way, Jose. You just don't run as a dad. That's just, no, and especially to a, a sinful son that's just gone off. I mean, that was just beyond belief in that culture. What did it say? <laughs> Ran and embraced him and kissed him, and the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, didn't even respond to his son, okay, I forgive you. Well, it was just obvious, and I'm sure if he needed to hear it, he, he told him. Said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate, for this my son was dead and is alive again. Amen? He was lost and is found. Amen? And they began to celebrate. Wow. I love that picture that Jesus paints of forgiving encouragement. Dads, how's it going with that? When something happens and your kids and you're just, uh, it just really gets your goat, God says, turn to me, ask, and I'll fill you with the Holy Spirit, and I will pour forgiving encouragement into your heart, Dad. That's all we have to do. Just turn to Him. Take a breath. Take a time out and turn to God. He will fill us with the Holy Spirit to do these things. Amen? Absolutely important. You think if these timeless principles were embraced by just the, the dads in this community here, this church family, you think that might make a difference in our own 
communities where we're living, working, in our own homes. Dads, come on, let's step up to the plate. Let's do this. What might it look like if we do something like that? How might it impact a child if we do that? Jeff Scroggins, pastor, author, Adventist scholar, tells of the time that he was seven years old. Living there in Tennessee, it was Sabbath afternoon, and they had friends that were over, and they thought, let's go take a Sabbath afternoon walk. Don't we love doing that, getting out on Sabbath in nature? Say yes, yes, it's wonderful. That's what they did. So they went out, and he's full of energy, and there's some other kids as well, and they're, they're just having a good time, and they race ahead of the adults that are just slowly not getting the exercise but enjoying the area, right? <clears throat> They, they're just full of energy. And I, I know it's hard to imagine. Kids full of energy? Full of energy. And they started looking out, and it was this big field, big field, and there was a shallow pond out there, and they just kept on charging and running and running. And Jeff, as a seven-year-old, he spotted something over in the corner of this field. He spotted a pile of wood and a lot of old plywood, for instance, and he thought, whoa. Wouldn't that be fun to jump on, turn it into a trampoline, just the perfect thing. And so he just charged right for that, that pile of plywood that was old, and, and he took a flying leap and jumped up on that, and boy, it did not, you know, disappoint him. He started bouncing up and down on the plywood, and all of a sudden he started hearing bzzz, bzzz, and he started feeling the attacks from several quadrants of bumblebees bumblebees. And he was just like, oh, no, they were getting into his shirt, and, they were, and he just started screaming the top of his lungs. And what do kids do when they're screaming and being hurt and scared? They start walking, uh, running toward their parents, of course. <laughs> and so he just started hightailing it. And for those that, that uh, you know, have heard about it, bumblebees are not supposed to be able to fly, Right? The size of the body with the wings and all of the engineering that I don't understand, but God made them to fly. And they fly fast, and they were keeping up with Jeff. And he was going as fast as he could straight toward his parents and that group of adults. And they had, he had gotten their attention, and they were looking and squinting, and they saw these bumblebees just flying with him. And they said, no, 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 don't come close, don't come close. Go jump in the pond, go jump in the pond. They were yelling at him. What did Jeff do? He kept running toward his parents. <laughs> and so what did his parents and the others do? They started running away, <laughs> except for one person, his dad. And his dad started running toward Jeff. And he met up with Jeff, and he ripped off Jeff's shirt and started swatting at these bumblebees and just hitting them, getting stung himself. And he finally got them all swatted away. They took him to the hospital, and on the way to the hospital, they noticed that he was not allergic, thankfully, to being bitten by bumblebees, but he got one more sting anyway, just in case, when he got to the hospital. But I just love that. Courageous. Faithful. Forgiving encouragement. Isn't that a beautiful picture? And that's, what a, that's a picture of our God in heaven, our Father in heaven. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And I want to be just like that as a dad. And if you're a dad or a stepdad or you're a dad to someone else or you're going to be a dad someday, I just want to encourage you with God's Word that He loves you. And you've blown it, I've blown it, yes, but remember, We've got a God, a Father in heaven, who has forgiving, encouragement, faithfulness, and courage to pour into our lives so that we can just pass that on to our kids. Let's step up to the plate together, shall we, dads? I appreciate you, and I think we should show our dads among us how much we appreciate them. Amen? And to, just, and to show you just a little token of our appreciation for you as dads and those of you that are stepdads and dads to others, 
Darla uh, has provided some very tasty morsels called oatmeal chocolate chip cookies, and they are really good. I helped by watching <laughs> a little bit. <clears throat> I've got those for you out here, and if you're vegan, she also has some for you, so be sure and ask for that on your way out today. But before we go, let's have a word of prayer, shall we? Father in heaven, thank you that we can call you Abba, Father. And Father, if we've had negative experiences with our own dads, Lord, thank you that you are there to show us the epitome, the wonderful model of what a father is like. Please help us to forgive our dads where they've failed, and as dads, help us to forgive ourselves where we've failed. And Father, help us to embrace these principles by spending time with Jesus each and every day, basking in your love is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here, and have a wonderful Sabbath afternoon.